1,000 subscribers. 1,000 people, at least 1,000 people, decided that they want to see every video I put out. Either that or they're waiting for specific stuff and they're willing to put up with the shit that I put out. Either way, 1,000 subscribers, that is amazing. So, I'm going to celebrate because I'm not going to be able to talk tomorrow since I have to go and I have my second extraction. So I am going to celebrate by doing something that a lot of people have clamored for and seem to go over really well. I'm going to read more from How to Win a Nintendo Games from Jeff Rovin. And I think I know the perfect game to read, if I can find it. I just found it before, but... Here it is. Chapter 11. Ghosts and Goblins. Type. Horror Search and Destroy. Objective. Your name is Arthur and you're a knight. Whilst you are picnicking with the princess, a demon swoops from the sky and spirits her away. Hurrying after them, you must pass through seven gates and fight the devil himself in order to save her. Hmm. Let's go through the seven gates of hell. Layout. The screen shows each of the seven stages through which Arthur must pass. He was very against ending a sentence with a preposition there. The graveyard in the woods, the ghost town, the underground route to the castle, the castle, the underworld, and Lucifer's chamber. I'm surprised they were able to call it Lucifer with all the censorship that Nintendo had back then. Hero's powers. Arthur comes equipped with armor, a weapon, usually a javelin, three lives, and the ability to leap or crouch. If he jumps from atop a tombstone in the first level, he'll go further. Yeah, I mean, if he jump from high, he'll be able to move further. Doesn't mean specifically he can jump further from the tombstones than anything else. As he travels, Arthur can exchange his weapon for any other one he finds. If you don't want to make the swap, simply jump over the weapon. That's not always... you're not always able to do that. These arms are javelins, swords, faster than javelins, axes, crosses, they halt any attack pronto, and torches, which not only burn whatever they touch, but also temporarily create a wall of fire. Many monsters also carve along jars, which, if slain, they leave behind. In them may be armor, a helmet, aka Extend, which adds a life. So the helmet is called Extend, so you just get an extra hit. And the Dark Time Disc, Time Disc is capitalized, it increases one's lifespan. So I guess, I guess that gives you an extra life. Finally, whenever Arthur slays a gatekeeper, a key falls from the sky. Retrieve it, and it restores armor. Arthur may have lost. They have they pick the worst possible time to split that sentence. It also allows him to proceed to the next level. I think that's more important than restoring your armor. Hero's weaknesses. Being touched by a foe or projectile will cost Arthur his armor. Being touched or hit a second time costs a life. Falling from a cliff or edge just once will kill the knight. You can also become a frog. See about your enemies. An object that Arthur must avoid is the light time disc, which to it decreases his lifespan. Oh, okay, it, the, it increases your time, the amount of time you have to complete. So why, did, why didn't they just fucking say time? It increases the amount of time you have left. Lifespan, fuck you. About your enemies. There are countless demons, including zombies, ravens, green monsters that spit fireballs, flying knights, forest ghosts. Not just regular ghosts, but forest ghosts. Forest ghosts with their spears and others. The toughest of the monsters are the Red Devils, which fly in brief balls of flame. The towering hopping unicorn, actually a cyclops. <laughs> the difference between a unicorn and a cyclops, what's that? I, 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 I can't tell the difference, honestly. Unicorn? Cyclops. They look exactly the same to me. The big men, the dragon, Satan, and the two-mouthed devil, each mouth exhaling death. Each mouth exhales death. Also found in numerous places are the Magician and the Frog King, both of whom will turn Arthur into a frog, whose sole power is hopping. If you happen to toss fire on the second tombstone of the first level, the Magician will usually appear. The frog will become Arthur again after 10 seconds, or when hit by a monster. So, don't get hit. Menu. There are the one and two player games, separate games for alternating players. Timer. The player has two minutes to get through the graveyard, two to pass through the woods, two to negotiate the first part of the ghost town, three to make it through the building of the big men, and so on. 
that doesn't really help. Two, 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 three, and so on. So three is going to happen three times, it's going to be three, four, five. What the hell? The more difficult the level of play, the more time you'll have. Scoring. Arthur earns points for killing monsters, from 100 for ravens to 10,000 for the devil. Points are also awarded for fighting the magician and also the yashichi, a disc-like object worth a substantial 5,000 points. Patterns. The landscape is always the same, though the monsters vary. For instance, green monsters, ravens, flying knights are always in the same place. Zombies and forest ghosts pop up in the same general area, but in different places. Weapons are found all over the place. Beginner Strategy. To begin with, if you open the game with a torch, start over. <laughs> okay. It may not be sporting, but it's practical. Compared to cold steel, fire is slow and useless. In general, follow this rule. Whatever the level, keep moving ahead as swiftly as possible, turning to kill monsters behind you only when they're about to strike. Stopping and presenting your back to the enemies in front will only invite them to cluster, meaning that you have foes to fight when you continue ahead. The one exception are the zombies. It's easy enough to turn and shoot the one undead who's usually lumbering up behind you. If you can't, just outrun it. Zombies quickly sink back into the earth. Climb the ladder to the upper level and kill the green monster. If you climb too slowly, it'll adjust its aim and shoot at you. Jump its bullets. Keep firing. You'll blast the raven while it's still off screen. As soon as you jump the third tombstone on the ridge, shoot the second green monster. Don't bother climbing down. If there are no zombies below, just jump. If you elected to stay below, you can avoid the projectiles of the first green monster by hugging the tombstone when you shoot zombies. Keep in mind, though, that at any time you crouch, the headstone may block your shot. It does not, however, impede monsters. Okay. When it rises, plug the raven behind it. Hurry to the left so the devil will miss you when it dives. When it rises, rush to the right. The devil will then sweep along the ground at you, briefly, but giving you enough time to shoot it. It should not take more than three shots to destroy the beast. When you cross the water and reach the woods, two or three waves of flying knights will come at you. Though you can kill them from behind, their shields protect them in front, it's best to avoid them altogether. Do so thusly. When you arrive, crouch at once in the middle of the tree right before this... Crouch at once in the middle of the tree right before the ledge. The knights will fly by without hurting you. Turn and shoot one or two if you wish. Rise at once, cross the small island, and crouch again in the clearing behind the trees. The next wave will also pass you by. I wish there were pictures to the... I mean, I attempted to just start doing this with actual video associated with it. God damn, this chapter just keeps going. Let me look ahead and see if there's anything, like, goofy. When you reach the unicorn, shoot at it instantly. How will you know until you've already reached him? The big guy will toss fireballs and leap high in the air, duck the flaming death, and run under the unicorn's feet, stand in the far right and fire to your left. The giant will die relatively quickly. Catch the key when it falls. When you go through the gate, wait until the blue demon appears on the right. Hop up, not onto the ledge, just jump in place. Shoot it, then go to the far right of the ledge you're on. Face left, and when the blue demon drops down at you, shoot it. This is really fucking dry. <laughs> it's just... When a, when a monster appears, shoot it. When another monster appears, shoot it. Jump over this monster, then shoot it. That's pretty much the next three, four pages. Oh no, here's something that's in italics. I'm looking for a period. If you choose instead to turn to the left and shoot the third blue demon before jumping onto the moving platform, you'll have to dodge one or two shots from the green monster above. Ride the platform up, kill the green beast, and take a mighty leap onto the second of the moving platforms. You must jump as far as possible on the right side of the platform. It will descend very quickly, and if you haven't jumped ashore, we'll carry you into the water. And your death. Upon reaching the first building of the ghost town, wait a second. The time it takes to fire two shots of your weapons. So is it saying to shoot first? There are petite devils around who will come at you from the windows. The delay throws them off, allowing Arthur to pass unscathed most of the time. Okay. Again, get through quickly or I'll have a mess o' demons to fight. And she has O with an apostrophe. A mess o' demons. Oh, I love this part. Shoot the raven, it usually appears from the right, then move an inch to the right and kill the big man there by firing at him repeatedly. An inch to the right. What if you have a really big TV? Or a really small TV? What if you're playing on an emulator, on like an iPhone, or an iPod, or an iPad, or something? How do you know what an inch is? An inch to the right could be like five or six spaces. 
Or is he made an inch from Arthur, which would be like one pixel? Oh, okay. If you move more than an inch to the right, the big man on the level above will drop debris square on your noggin. Okay. They picked the worst fucking places in this book to split the pages, I swear. You can run to the wall on the far right, wait until the big man on the other side arrives, then shoot him through the wall. He can't reach you, obviously. Then scurry up the ladder and shoot the big man on the other side of that wall. Don't start shooting and then abort before either the monster is dead. It'll hurl debris at you, which can pass through the wall. The advantage of this tactic... The advantage of this tack... I thought it said tactic, but no. The advantage of this tack is that when you go to the right side of the mansion, it'll be ogre-free. The bad news is that you'll have to fight your way through the big men who have used the time to herd to the left. Thus, I favor a different approach. So why the fuck did you even tell us that? I'm gonna skip ahead to the advanced strategy. When you enter the next level, bats will descend in a wave, from right to left. Shoot the first three on the right, move into the space they vacated, and shoot the ones on the left. Also, blasting zombies. Go to the upper ledge, less blue... What the fuck? Go to the upper ledge. Less blue ball breathing mountains here. Did I miss something? Fire repeatedly at the mountain you do encounter as soon as it appears on the right side. Six shots will do the trick. Then put a pair of shots on the red devil on the steps. As soon as you fire at him, dart to the left, jump down to the lower step, and when the devil passes overhead, run to the right. Turn left and jumping before it swoops down at you, blow it to crimson atoms. It's just a jump to the left and a step to the right. With your hands on your hip, for your knees in tight. Don't even bother with the next forest ghost that chases you. It won't touch you. When you reach the next ball-breathing mountain, stop in the middle of the step below it. Hop up, pump two shots into it, wait for the blue ball to pass overhead. It won't drop down on you. Jump again, shoot the forest ghost if it's emerged, and keep firing until the mountain explodes. Keep firing until the mountain explodes. You will not find that sentence in another book. I dare you to. Continue along the stone staircase, watching out for the petite devils which will attack when you reach the money bags. Note, though there are many ways to proceed, you will face red devils on every route. The best way to go is to ascend the second ladder when you encounter. There's one less red devil along this path. Once you reach the top of the cliff, jump all the way down, kill the red devils there. They are easier to slay than their brethren. And battle the dragon. Blast its stinging tail segments before turning on its head. Do this by jumping up and shooting, then running under it as it sweeps from one side to the other. Yeah, yeah I'm going to skip ahead to see if it talks about how to defeat Lucifer. Getting through this level, you'll find yourself in a real toughie. Once more, you have to climb, despite this fact that very strong enemies have a different idea. Shoot the skulls again and head up to the unicorn. Stay to the right. If you keep up a relentless barrage, he usually will not venture towards you. If he does, you can slide under him when he hops. Though he'll jump back to the left very quickly. When the unicorn vaporizes, climb and face the most hideous foe to date, the most powerful dragon of them all. The creature lies coiled on an upper ledge and wakes when you're below it. Fight it as you did the others, though you have to determine which vantage point is best for you. You can jump up into the highest niche on the far right side, two levels below it, and shoot from there. Dangerous. Or you can climb up to the level below it, rush to the right, and dash to the left when he passes over you. Repeating this process several times until just the head remains then jumping over the head while shooting it. This works best. Or you can climb the ladder beneath the monster, speed up when it's uncoiled, and fight it while ascending. This one's fun, but difficult. In any case, when you finally get past Lucifer's many guards and face the honcho, <coughs> you call Lucifer a honcho, you're in for a surprise. Unless you have the cross, you're going to have to attack him, futilely, with whatever's at hand. After just a few shots, the beast will appear to die. In fact, he's not dead. He's just an illusion, and you, Hardy Knight, will be flung back to the beginning of the game. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's how he handles the fuck you moment of Ghosts and Goblins. Par. This tends to be a relatively low-scoring game, especially if you choose to race ahead of zombies, forest goats, petite devils, etc. without killing them. Why don't you say enemies? A moderate killing spree will earn you 7,000 to 10,000 points per stage, that is, Graveyards, Woods, Blue Devil, Ghost Town, Big Man Building, etc. Yeah, we know what a stage is, Jeff. Any disadvantage. The turboing of your weapon is very useful. Training tips. Believe it or not, most of your basic skills you'll need will be honed in just the graveyard and forest levels. Stay there and take chances. Learn what Arthur can do. Go to the forest goats and let them haunt you en masse. 
If you can shoot them all down, you're going to give the devil a run for his money. If you have the advantage, go through the game at least once in slow. If you're really ambitious, hop right into the later levels and try your skills there. You can do this by manipulating the controls as follows. That's how he phrases, you can do this by pressing a secret code. When the title screen comes up at the beginning, jab the B button three times while simultaneously pressing the controller to the right. Tap the controller on the upside, let it go, then hit the B button three more times. Press the controller left, lift your finger, hit B three times, press the controller down, lift your finger, hit B three more times, then tap start. Yeah, so all that business about press your finger down and lift up, he could have just said press BBB right, BBB left, BBB down, BBB start. I guess he's just trying to be creative. After the life number indicator appears, the screen will read stage 1A. Use the A button to advance to the phase of play you want. If you go too far, back up using the B button. Note, this code has been published elsewhere with the erroneous directions. This is the correct way to input it. Rating. An extremely difficult game requiring unprecedented coordinations, Ghosts and Goblins is not for beginners. At times, like the 900th time to try to get to the Big Men building, it's as much fun as having your gums tattooed. But you can't say that you didn't get your money's worth. Challenge A+, graphics B+, sound effects B. Oh man. The days before video and even image walkthroughs. What can I say? Well, thank you everybody for 1,000 subscribers. Here's to 1,000 more.